the stretch shortening cycle, which involves movements that induce a stretch followed by a subsequent powerful concentric contraction, is a key neuromuscular phenomenon underpinning ballistic jump and plyometric performance. For jump-related movements, the stretch shortening cycle can be broadly described as fast, for example ground contact time less than 0.25 seconds, or slow, where ground contact time is longer than 0.25 seconds. For example, a drop jump involves a fast stretch shortening cycle, whereas the counter movement jump involves a slow stretch shortening cycle movement with ground contact times typically above 0.5 seconds. The ability to produce force in a fast stretch shortening cycle action is known as reactive strength. Reactive strength can be assessed by performing a drop jump on a contact mat or force plate with the cue to minimize contact time and maximize jump height. By dividing the jump height by ground contact time, the metric known as reactive strength index, RSI, can be determined. Plyometric jump training is a training method that primarily aims at producing high rates of force development through the stretch shortening cycle, with jump exercises involving shorter or longer ground contact times. According to the principle of specificity, plyometric jump training is well suited to improve the reactive strength index through neuromuscular adaptations. Therefore, to determine the effects of plyometric jump training on the reactive strength index in healthy individuals across the lifespan, Rodrigo and colleagues conducted a systematic review with meta-analysis. Studies were only included in the analysis if the plyometric jump training intervention was three weeks or more performed by healthy individuals, with jump-based RSI reported pre- and post-training, which was then compared to either an active control group, for example athletes involved in their standard training, or a specific active control group, for example, individuals using heavy resistance training. Overall, 61 studies, totaling 2,576 participants, aged between 8 and 73 years, met the criteria and were included in the analysis. 1,509 individuals participated in the intervention groups, and 1,067 participated in the control groups. Training duration in the intervention and control groups ranged from 4 to 96 weeks, although most studies lasted six weeks. And the frequency of weekly training sessions ranged from one to three sessions per week, with most studies using the drop jump to measure the reactive strength index. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a summary of Rodrigo and colleagues' research. Firstly, plyometric jump training is effective at improving the lower limb reactive strength index in healthy individuals. Interestingly, plyometric jump training had a greater impact on RSI in adults in comparison to youth. Biological maturity status of youth populations may help to better explain plyometric jump training related RSI adaptations. However, more research investigating biological maturation and the effects derived from plyometric jump training programs in youth populations is needed. Alternatively, studies involving participants younger than 18 may have just used a more conservative dosage, preventing RSI maximization. Regarding training prescription, plyometric jump training was more effective with programs over seven weeks. In line with this, a trend was noted for greater RSI changes after more than 14 plyometric jump training sessions. Regarding frequency, greater plyometric jump training related RSI changes were noted after three sessions per week in comparison to fewer sessions. However, when the weekly number of jumps is equated, training frequency doesn't seem to impact training induced adaptations. That being said, when a greater number of jumps needs to be accumulated, a greater training frequency may offer some advantages. For example, greater inter-repetition rest and training intensity that could support training adaptations. Therefore, a pragmatic approach to increase plyometric jump training weekly frequency or volume may involve integrating plyometric jump training exercises at the end of the warm-up, as this has the advantage of potentially increasing linear and change of direction speed. In terms of the total number of jumps completed during the programs, similar RSI changes were noted regardless of performing more or fewer than 1,080 total jumps. However, due to the different training program duration and the type of jump exercises used, total jumps completed range from 108 to 21,000 jumps. And because training volume has been prescribed in different ways, such as duration, distance and foot contacts, or a mixture of these, the optimal number of jumps to perform is yet to be determined. Nevertheless, from an injury prevention perspective, 
the current evidence points towards using a conservative total number of jumps that gradually progresses in number with the intensity of the jumps prescribed also considered. For example, a high volume to low volume approach might be used when the intensity of plyometric jump training is increasing. Such approach may allow significant RSI improvements while also lowering injury risk. And in some instances, a tapering period may further maximise improvements in terms of injuries or any adverse health events related to plyometric jump training most of the included studies did not report any however four studies involving mostly youth male soccer players did report low levels of muscle pain after initial training and in one study one older adult did not complete the training intervention due to pain in their achilles possibly due to the plyometric jump training despite plyometric jump training being relatively safe when training poorly conditioned individuals with low strength levels or an inability to decelerate their body mass during landing tasks, caution is recommended. When programming plyometric jump training to improve physical fitness and RSI and to help reduce the likelihood of injuries, an example line of progression for vertical jumps may entail drop lands, drop jumps, low repeated hurdle jumps and high repeated hurdle jumps. And for horizontal jumps, a line of progression may contain the following exercises single leg hops repeated single leg hops straight leg pounding and bounding and that concludes the summary of rodrigo and colleagues research regarding the effects of plyometric jump training on the reactive strength index as always i recommend you go and check out the full article the link is in the description thanks for listening folks see you next time